I guess it's just a matter of not leaning forward to block my light. That's okay. What camera am I looking at? Am I looking at the phone? The phone is what we're going to post. This is just the live. Just don't block my life. Oh, I'm so tired. Okay. Well, there you go. If nobody wants to watch tonight. That's fine, too. Hello, Al Bear. My man. Hello, Kay Vegas. Hello, Rachel Boren. Welcome. Hello, Christy. Langley Boone. Can't see Boo. Can't see Boo. Hello. I know, Darla. Hello, Terry Meeb. Hello, sound Charles. Is working well tonight. What is? Your sound. Yeah. The. Um, the phone was a one episode experiment. Uh, we needed it for the video. And we have a really nice microphone plug, plugged into the phone. So <clears throat> that should be good. But since y'all like to watch the live and it be, you know, it be somewhat high quality, I'm doing it off the, uh, the laptop. Hello, Chris. Hello, ACNC12. Hello, SDL. Hello, EDL. Hello, Elizabeth Estrada. Not to be confused with Elizabeth Key or Elizabeth Betts. Those are three different people. Hello, Linda Wynn. All right. Charles says we're sounding good. Good, Charles. That's good enough for me. Hello, Belinda Daniel from Brownsboro. Where's Brownsboro, Belinda? I don't know that I've ever seen you here in the room, Belinda. That sounds like Texas or Georgia. I know Brownsville. I know Murfreesboro, but I don't know Brownsboro. Oh Hello, God. Hector. What's up? Hello, Kitten Tracks. That's what he's talking about. Oh, right outside of just... Canton and Tom. Okay. All right, Belinda. You're like our home girl. You're not that far away, just a little bit east. A little bit, a little bit southeast of here. You just roll down to I twenty and Ball Hammer East, and we go through Canton and Tyler. Yep. Haven't been to First Monday in years in Canton. I don't think I've ever been to Canton. The last time I went was my mother, <clears throat> and it's everything was shabby chic, everything. So we were not. I was shabby chic for a minute when I had an apartment. Compartment? I was uh, single, pre Emma Kelly. Hello, Mike Boone. Hello, Kelly Diplacito. Then for her baby nursery, it was a little shabby chic, shabby chic light. And then that's it. Belinda, yeah. Yeah, yeah. East Texas, Piney Woods. I've ridden out there a little bit. Uh, more Central Texas, but I've ridden out there in East Texas, Piney Woods. Hello, Kitten Tracks. Good. I think we're getting the audio, visual, everything. We're getting it dialed in. I'm twisting and I'm tweaking. God, my head is itching. Y'all quit talking about me. What up, Dee Dee? Hello, Terry Mabe. Oh, I think I said hello to you, Terry Mabe. Say hi to you again. All right. Okay. Testing one, two, testing. Testing. <clears throat> Hugh, <clears throat> Hugh G. Erection. Please pick up the red courtesy phone. Hugh, Hugh G. Erection. Please pick up the red courtesy phone. Welcome to a sandwich and some loving, everybody. I'm Kelly Raspberry Evans with my husband and podcast co-host, Al 
Alan Evans. Hey, train in the house. Y'all forgive me. I am a little draggy today. I took a nap. I slept hard. And now, you know, when you take a nap and you take a hard nap and then it like ruins the rest of your day because you just can't snap out of the grog. Emma Kelly said she's never seen anything like it. She was telling me things and in 10 seconds, I forgot what she said. Completely discombobulated, Alan. I came home and I couldn't locate you. And I started to worry. The oh, thanks. Well, the dogs weren't here. I'm just and, glad you were worried. Well, I just assumed you were on a walk. So I just waited for about an hour. And then I waited for about an hour and a half. And I thought to myself. No way she's walking that long. <laughs> self? There's no way she's walking that long. She not never walks that long. I could with Zoe, but not with Larry. Larry can't handle it. So I, I dialed you up on the locate. I can see your location. And it said you were at the house. So I just assumed you were upstairs sleeping. I was upstairs in the guest room. It's the room that gets the darkest in the house. It's a and good, it's very comfortable. Room. That's that used to be our marital mattress, but, which uh, was a comfortable mattress. Uh, but things, we moved it upstairs. Been worked in. It's disgusting for our guests to have <laughs> to visualize that. But well, that's where I go. It's not disgusting. And, we always get um, plastic around it. The dogs were with me, but usually when someone comes in the house, they go tearing out of there, barking and screaming. But I guess they were equally as exhausted. Y'all, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just cannot. I don't know if it's the time change. Is it something going on with me physically? I am exhausted and cannot catch up on my sleep. I just can't. And I went to, um, in the past week or two, I've had a heart doctor visit finally had my gynecology visit. Whoa. It's been pre-COVID, y'all. And today I went for my mammogram. Let me rank those on a scale of uh, least favorite to leastest favorite. Oh, okay. This will be, a, this is good because we're going to talk about some of this kind of stuff on this podcast, but lay it on me. Well, just going to the doc, you know, just, I don't know. It's just going to the doctor about your health is always like, eh. You need to do it. Preventive care is so important, y'all, because I know it's, I, I don't know why, just you, you feel like when you're healthy, why should I go to the doctor? But preventive care is so important because it's way cheaper than when you get sick and have something and have to take care of it, right? And Alan and I have been dealing with some, um, you know, I don't know if y'all have heard, we're, we're on a, trying to live a little bit more on a budget, so I'm trying to keep expenses down. Well, you know what I always <laughs> said when I was a, uh, a single man uh, prowling the bars, trying to pick up young women. I'm not a gynecologist, but hey, I'll take a look. All right. So I went for my heart doctor visit. I think I I've guess used I'm, that one before. You have. It's fine. So I went for my heart doctor visit and that one went great. She said, did I talk about this on the last podcast that I just now take the pill? Like if I start having the heart palpitations? I don't think so. No. Oh, I don't remember. I can't remember who I tell what to it because we've got, you know, this podcast Love Letters to Kelly podcast. Love Letters. Kid Craddock in the morning. Nationally syndicated. And um, it's just a lot. Okay, and well, tell I it. Can't remember I, know, I tell what. So I, know I we apologize if I'm repeating this on A Sandwiches and Love It. Just tell it. But when I went to the hospital with my heart palpitation, they gave me an IV bag. And basically, the liquid that was in that IV bag is what got my heart to stop pounding out of my chest in a little pill form. So now instead of taking that every single day, if I have a heart palpitation, I just pop a pill. And in a few minutes, my heart goes back to normal. So that's it. It's sort of like carrying an EpiPen, but it's a little pill. So I went for my doctor's appointment. That's what I found out. So that was all good news. Found out, oh, my risk of stroke is less than 1%. Well, that's good. And then that's I went for my calcium score, which just, you know, sees how much calcium is built up in your arteries and I guess around your heart, which also is an indicator of your risk of heart attack or stroke. You're in my light, honey. What what, what are we what are we doing? Why you, are you doing that? Watch my light. Don't get it. Alan's okay. been setting up the studio and he's in my we're, light. We're gonna get into that too. Anyway, my calcium score was a big fat zero. So just good, good news across the board with my heart health, right? So then, you know, my daughter is 17 and not I'm not gonna share her medical business, but she has now got um, a female doctor that she goes to. OK, so I had it in my calendar that it was time to go see Dr. Holt. And the last time I went to take Emma Kelly there, I told her, hey, I haven't been to a gynecologist since pre-COVID, y'all. That's not good. But pre-COVID, I was on the regular. I saw my eye doctor every year, dentist twice a year, gynecologist every year. I did everything 
clockwork, but COVID, I just stopped. So I asked her, you know, and my old gynecologist was way down far away. I said, are you accepting new patients? She said, yes. Well, I guess I forgot in that moment that I made an appointment for me. And so when I went this week to take Emma Kelly for her follow-up appointment, they said, all right, we'll fill out this paperwork. Um, she'll see you next. I'm like, what? I completely forgot. And ladies, you know, there's a lot of mental and physical prep that goes into your gynecological visit. Were you prepared? Well, mentally, I was not. Thank the Lord. We're not worried about mental. I had taken a shower. I told them that in front of the lobby. I was like, well, thank God I took a shower this morning because I'm very, you know, I'm just very vocal. And I don't really realize there's people sitting behind me at the time. Mm. And I said, oh, my God, thank mm. God I took a shower. Because they were like, are you okay? Are you ready to do that? Mm. I was like, well, I, thankfully, I took a shower because, you know, sometimes working with the Kid Craddock Morning Show, Alan, I skip that. National Syndicate. I skip it and say, I'll just get it later. Like this morning, I skipped it this morning because I overslept because I'm so tired. Okay, so I have questions. Um, but I did do it and it was fine. Number one, and I, I will keep a level of maturity to, to these I questions. I highly doubt it, but go for it. Well, is visiting the, the female doctor, the gynecologicalist, is it similar to visiting the when the, the, the man goes in for his physical Typically, you don't want to pick out a doctor who played college basketball. Well, I don't think take that into consideration. But my whole life, I've had a male gynecologist. This is the first time. Did I've he had play a college basketball? I don't know. He was not big. He was just a regular size man. But for my my gynecologist, a very petite woman, I guess if that matters. Oh, well, that's good. But petite I'll tell you is what, good. I've petite never had good. a female gynecologist before, and she was so incredibly gentle. And everything she said, okay, I'm going to touch you now. I'm going to, every step of the way, she let me know, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. So gentle. I'm like, I almost felt like it was a pleasant experience. I mean, I just didn't have, you know, like all the mashing and rubbing. I guess because she's a woman, she knows what's going on in her body. So she, I guess she kind of relates to what's going on in mine. So it was really not bad at all. And uh, so that was good. And then she said, well, when you, when's the last time you had a mammogram? Now, I have kept up a little bit better with that. So it's been just like a couple of years. She said, well, you really need to have a mammogram every year. But the gynecological exam, she said, because of my age, if I'm healthy and all's good, that can be every two years. And did you know this? I did not know this, that once you hit 65 ladies, you never have to go back to the gynecological doctor for your appointment again. You don't need a gynecologist after 65. How about that? What are your parts just self-sustain after I guess 70, they just, 65 or something? I guess they assume we're not using them anymore. I might be able to stop seeing her earlier than 65. Just saying. So um, anything, that, that's, that's what went on today. But I did go for the mammogram to a place today where everybody recommended, and I'm not going to say anything. It, it kind of hurt. It, it hurt. It kind of squished a little bit. Put that wanna, thing in the waffle press. I don't press. want to say it hurt because I don't want everybody to say, oh, I'm going to get a gram now. It's not the end of the world. Flatten that but thing like a pancake. It's not that bad. But just the way, I guess, the position, it kind of pinched my nipple a little bit, y'all. And I'm telling you what, when Kelly was telling me what they did, I was glad. Glad I don't got to like throw throw my gonads up into something well, like I that and then press thing. those down. It wasn't that bad, but it just it was a little bit uncomfortable, but not... Listen, just five seconds. No big deal. No big deal. But when, I guess I'm going to find well, out that I've important. got a clean bill of health, yeah, I'm sure. It's important. And we can move forward from there. But right after my gynecology, I mean, my breast exam today, y'all, I stumbled home and I remembered this is yard maintenance day. I'm not lying down in the guest room until I hear the last of that leaf blower go away. And I waited. And then I went to take a nap. The gynecological, uh, before this podcast. the gynecological, all kidding aside, the gynecological and the uh, mammograms are very important appointments, correct? Very. As are the male versions, which I've made mention of a few times. When's the last time you've been for one? It's been a while. I, I just got the letter, though, the letter that I need to uh, go have another colonoscopy. So, so I got to yeah. go, I, I guess do I got to go back to the butt hut and have that done again. My favorite. Can I go with you? Our colonoscopy doctor is dreamy. Back to the colon cabin. For the, for and the he moved his office within walking distance of our house. Well, then you don't have to go. I can just they walk are, home. 
no, this is for his medical office for the actual, you're my light again, for the actual procedure, you go to a different place. But his office is relocated to where my daughter's pediatrician used to be. And it's literally walking distance. So maybe I'll just start, you know, on my walks, just be like, I just thought I'd stop in because I, I didn't realize you were just right here. But then I'll be kind of funky smelling from walking. So maybe I won't do that. Okay. Um, our live studio audience has, um, some of the females in the live studio audience are saying that female gynecologists are much better than males in their experience. Well, I loved my old gynecologist. I won't say that. I thought he was great, but I just, this was just a very, just a different, more delicate experience. Some of our other live studio audience members are, are noticing you You seem to be hyper aware and concerned of the lighting situation. Yes, because I told you before the podcast, first of all, I'm I'm looking at the microphone. I hadn't finished my sentence, but oh, I, I guess that was I, the you, end can, of the you can, you can, you can go ahead. I didn't realize there was a comma. I thought there was a period. You have on your head right now, about three feet away, at what's called a key light. That is the biggest light in the room. Yes. Okay. That's to my left. For our podcast, which is an audio format. That you're filming for YouTube TV. Yeah. So I don't, in in my opinion, you don't need to be so hyper concerned with the cloud of your husband clouding out and blocking out your light. Because yeah. I have this little tiny piss ant Amazon 30 watt. That's shining on P my right side. POS light over here. That's shining on my right side, Alan. And when you lean forward, you're blocking my light. It's called a and you're fill filling my face in the shadow. It's called a fill light. You put so much time and effort mm -hmm. into setting up lighting. I would think <laughs> that would be of concern to you when you block my light. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm the eclipse. Hey, the eclipse is coming up, babe. It is April fourth or April eighth. How many of those glasses is Big Al sold? Um, well, he sold three until today. Then somebody called and I think out of pity and offered to buy 20, but I don't know <laughs> if that's going to go through or not. But yeah, everybody's giving away free um, eclipse glasses. And that way you can look directly at the sun without searing your retina. But um, he's selling them for like, what, $3.99 each? And everybody else is giving them away for free. So he's, you know, another great Big Al Mac investment. My man. And he's also ordered a ton of T-shirts um, about the eclipse for his bar in Waxahachie. Because it's a big deal. People are tra traveling from all over the country to yeah. be here the in the Dallas-Fort Worth area because yes. we are directly in the path of the eclipse. And it's supposed to last for about four minutes. It's called the path of totality. It's supposed to last for about four minutes. And it's, I, I guess I didn't realize just how big of a deal it is, but it's not going to happen again in our lifetime. Babe, it's going to be weird. I'm excited. We've been, we're, we're potentially invited to a viewing party at a bar and it's in the middle of the day it's gonna get cold yep sure will I guess the temperature in the middle of the day the, temp the, 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 the temperature will drop like a rock that's interesting for just a little while but for four minutes i guess so that's interesting it is so weird i don't know if we should try because traffic is going to be a problem i think people are going to literally from what we hear will get out of their cars on the interstate, on the freeways, and just stop what they're doing to experience it. Well, we got, just had a uh, eclipse not too long ago. It wasn't the same. It, was it wasn't the year. same, but I remember I was out for a walk, and all the shadows were in threes. Yeah, because it, it was a it was yeah. a partial eclipse, but it was weird because the temperature did drop even though it was a partial eclipse. Yep. So there's that. I missed it because I think I was inside napping while Alan was out walking the dogs. Either that, or I was blocking your light. As you continue to do, I just um, keep leaning forward. You know what else I think you need to do while leaning forward? <clears throat> that. Well, you know, eating better is so easy with Factor. And they're delicious, ready-to-eat meals, fresh, never frozen. All of them chef-crafted, dietitian approved delivered to your doorstep, and ready to eat in just two minutes. I love that because when I'm ready to eat, I don't want to spend time meal prepping and cooking and cleaning. There's none of that with Factor. Just two minutes in the microwave, 
you're ready to have a delicious meal. Factor gives you over 35 different options. You can choose from every week, including Protein Plus, Keto, Calorie Smart, which is the one we chose. Also, more than 60 add-ons, so you stayed fueled up and feeling good all day. We're talking pancakes, smoothies, midday bites, so much more. Factor is flexible. You can order as much or as little as you need every week. You can pause or reschedule your deliveries at any time. And you can sign up and save because we've done the math and factor is less expensive than takeout. And the meals are restaurant quality for sure. How does jalapeno lime cheddar chicken sound? Or cavatappi and Italian style pork ragu. Sounds pretty good. Or goat cheese filet mignon. They got fancy filet mignon. Nom, 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 nom. And those are just a few of the options on the menu this week. So you need to get it signed up because I can't wait to see what next week's options are. Yes, please head to factormeals.com slash sandwich 50 and use code sandwich 50 to get 50% off. That's code sandwich 50 at factormeals.com slash sandwich 50 to get 50% off. Um, little trivia. Uh, has there ever been another podcast where we've said the word pancake three or four times in the first 10, 15 minutes? It was mentioned during your spot. It was also mentioned uh, in regards to your mammogram. I don't recall. Them turning but I your, do love pancakes. I'm turning your breast into a pancake. I prefer a pancake over a waffle. Fight me on that. Come at me. I don't care. I'm very proud of... Emma Kelly, my daughter, she went online and applied for a job and scheduled the appointment online, got really cute today, fixed her hair, put on a stylish t-shirt and some jeans, and she looks so good in a ponytail, a slick back ponytail with her hair parted right down the middle, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. And went up for her in-person job interview. And it's looking good, y'all. The lady, Emma Kelly, said she really seemed like she liked Emma Kelly. Said she liked the hours that she's available to work. That was very attractive to her. And she's going to call her back on Friday to see where we go from here. So, Emma Kelly said, I don't have the job yet. She's going to call me back on Friday. I asked her when she came in, how was her day and what happened? She said nothing. Well, that's the way everybody is. She said nothing. That's the way all kids and are. And then you told me she had a job interview. That's kind yeah. of a big deal. It is. But that's the way all kids are. When you ask them when you pick them up from school, what's your day? Nothing. nothing. Anything exciting, exciting happen? No. And then I said, did, did they ask you any questions? And she said, one. Yeah. And I said, well, what they ask you? Uh, what 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 do you what do you think is good customer service? Yeah. And I said, well, that's a good question. What'd you say? And she's like. She wouldn't tell us. Oh no! See, that, that's just different. People tell me how what a sparkling personality she has, and I'm like, really? Because <laughs> it's most, it's always when I'm not around. I, was, I think that's true for everybody with teenagers. I was kind of interested to see how that would go, but maybe she'll tell us later. Yeah, she's had an interesting week because speaking of doctor's visits, we had to take Emma Kelly to the allergist this week um, for Monday with Mama. I accidentally, well, I didn't accidentally. It's just, that's the first appointment and we had to get her in. Her allergies are so bad. And I said, Mama, do you want to go spend Monday at Mama at the allergist office? Because, you know, that, that back test they do is pretty prickly and uncomfortable and, you know, nobody can comfort like Grandmama can. Mm -hmm. And so we went and Kelly, we found out is not allergic to molds. Those didn't light up at all, but out of all the animals, we thought maybe her horse, but no, very mild allergy there. Really allergic to cats. Cats, okay. And she's always wanted a cat. So she's like, can y'all please help me with that? And she's very allergic to trees and grass, things you can't avoid. So she's going to start doing the sublingual drops, which are real cheap, y'all. Mm. So um, we're going to start doing that and very... Excited to, and then in three years, what they do is they gradually increase, they expose you to what you're allergic to and gradually build up. So at the end of a three year course, she's supposed to be able to tolerate all these things. I swear she's done this before. Am I having she a did. false memory? She did. She did this right when we first got together, Alan. We did this um, allergy test and, and did what the was, drops. What was the result? Well, she gave up on the drops, but she was also about seven or eight years younger. Mm -hmm. And the drops were incre increasing in strength and increasing in taste. And she did not like that. And so anyway, her allergies did improve, but because she didn't follow through with the course, here we are. But now they've added flavorings. She's also almost 18 and more mature. 
and um, knows that I'm going to be really upset if she doesn't follow through with this this time because they're not cheap. Yeah, we want to nip this in the bud. Once and in for all. Bud, Once and for all. In the bud, meaning three years from now. But of course, they entice you with, hey, you can pay so many hundreds of dollars four times a year or sign up for a year supply and you'll save a few hundred dollars. Or if you buy all three at once, wow, look at those savings. So guess what we went with? You hit it all at once, y'all. It was a lot. Hmm. Just think about all those credit card points we're earning. Yeah. We could fly, what, to Europe? <laughs> Not hardly. I don't know. Um, I think we also had to do this with Larry one time. Remember that? Yeah. We rolled him to an allergist and paid thousands of dollars, and he's still in there scratching his nuts like he always does. Well, I'll tell you, I did the doggy allergist, the doggy dermatologist with George. May he rest in peace. Amen. And it worked. Ah, amen. It worked for him. He His allergies went away after like not even two years doing the shots. With Larry. What about numb nuts? What happened to him? Who's numb nuts? Larry. I just said with Larry. And mm -hmm. you, you. What know, happened? Well, he's still itching mm -hmm. and scratching and yeah. scooting. Yeah. And chewing. Yeah. I don't know. And almost dying. <laughs> that dog that's, is not going to die. That's not funny, but that he dog almost is did. That going to outlive us all. And he's going to itch and lick. Yes. Every step of the way. Yes. It's just his lot in life. Yes. I'll be laying in my coffin casket ready. And you'll be you'll be above my coffin weeping, and there'll be Larry, and he'll be scratching his like he always does, Scooting. licking his like he always he'll does. Scoot. I'll put him in the coffin with you just for a minute before we close the lid, and just let him scoot across your chest <laughs> one last time. That would be so disrespectful. Or an act of love. <laughs> you would put Larry on my chest while I'm laying in the coffin, so he could scoot on my chest. Like you're gonna know. Yeah. But that dog loves me. I would just, when I went in, I, I woke up from my nap and he stayed with me the whole time for my nap. And when I went in to go, he knows I'm going to feed him. And I come around the corner. He's so excited to see me every morning when I, when I can't wake up with him on the weekends and stuff. He's just so, that dog loves me. You're all he has, babe. It's true. You're the only friend he has in the world. Well, D Dylan, he loves Dylan. Yeah, Dylan Dil likes Larry. But, D but Larry loves me a little more because I, you yeah. know. Well, you're, I feed him and I'm here more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm Larry's person. Dylan loves love Larry. He, he, does, he love, does. He likes Larry. He tells I was like, why do you like Larry more than Zoe? You know, I want to I want to understand. He said, I just like him because he's small and he's mellow. He's he's not real hyper like Zoe. That, that's yeah. Dylan's explanation. And Zoe is so hyper jealous and, and you know, she does of, get jealous. of Larry. If I give Larry any attention She'll come in and she'll nudge his face out of the way and put her face up to, you know, to my hand to be rubbed. And she'll attack him sometimes and she dominates him, which is kind of funny. But yeah, poor little Larry. He's so lucky he found me. I don't know if anybody else would put up with him, but. I don't think they would. Um, okay. I brought uh, some show content. You did? I did. Other than my gynecological appointments and. Yeah. Allergy appointments. We've got more to talk about. Well, what? I don't know. I thought that this would lead to some other discussion. Um, you know how you get in a mood sometimes you, you go through a period of time and it's just like you're you're I don't know. You're a little more on edge, a little more irritable and things that wouldn't normally annoy you seem to annoy you more. Is this going to turn into a marriage counseling? Session? No, it's not at all. OK, so. No, it's not things that annoy me in my marriage. Okay. This it's, is it's a thinly veiled no. way of telling me what I'm doing to irritate no, you. No, this is a list. And you know, people love lists. You know that. So I made a list just off the top of my head, things that lately have really annoyed me. And they then they shouldn't. These are things that shouldn't annoy me, but they, they do. Am I doing anything on that list? Well, let's let's go through the list. I'm telling y'all. These are this is, this is all set up. Here. Here it is right here, the list. Here are 10 things that annoy AE. Uh, number one, this hasn't happened in a while, but this does happen from time to time. People who write checks. 
It is an antiquated way of doing things, but don't you still write checks to certain people who that's the way they want to be paid? Now, when I say that, people who write checks at like Target or right, that Kroger, doesn't make sense. It's like really? Well, that, I, it's 2024. Well, that's okay as long as they have the check completely filled out when the totals announced. No, I don't understand. You're there, the, the total is rung up, and then they're digging through right. the purse to they're find the check. Standing there the whole time, and then the person's like. Oh, and then fills in. You know you're going to pay it to yeah, Target. Yeah, that right? is that is a, a minor annoyance. It's a minor annoyance. These aren't things that you know are going to cause me any. Does that happen recently? Is that why you're so perturbed? Yeah, it happens all the time. It happens all the time. Does it happen all the time? I would say. You know, that... I'm that guy that pays with cash though. So I'm digging for bills and change when I'm at Starbucks, and the guy behind me's like, "Dude, why don't yeah. you just use the app? What so are you you're doing?" A source of annoyance. For yeah, some. absolutely. Right. I don't claim to be annoyance free you are most definitely not but i didn't have time to come up with my list well, that was a live clap back uh number two people who direct me at an intersection from another car how often does that happen happens all the time so well what are you doing to up, cause that pulling that up, never happens pulling up to a four-way stop Oh, that. Okay. There's somebody coming from the other direction. I get to the stop first. They get there second. You have the right of way, sir. I have the right of way. But they're going to tell me, go ahead, go ahead. Wave. They're waving. Go, go. Like, yeah, I, I know. I got here before you. Why are you waving at me? Don't wave at me. But the problem becomes when... You, as the driver, arrive second, and the person that does have the right of way just sits there. Oh, and then it becomes the and stop, start, stop, like, start, stop, start, stop, start bit. You have to, you give them a second or two, a beat, and they don't go. Then you have to be the person to say, Go, you have the right of way, ma'am or sir. People do not understand four way stops, they just don't. Another one that happens a lot is in a residential area, you'll have cars parked on the curb such that there's only room for one car to go at a time. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I'm driving down the road in a residential area, all the cars are on the left side. My it lane. Should be. Yeah. My lane is open. Okay. Unless the people well, are parked facing that way. So if a, way. if a car is coming the other direction and he stops, a lot of times they'll say, come on, come on. It's okay. Go. Like, I'm like, well, yeah, I do. I have an open lane in front of me. I'm, I'm supposed to just keep going. Right. And then you yield when I'm out of your way, then you go. Right. But they, you know, they're like waving at me. Like you about hit me in Sorry. the face, Alan, Hys in your fury. Hysterically waving at me. Calm down. I'm sorry. Well, there comes a time when you've got people that are parked on both sides of the street side by side, and there's just room for one car to get through. <laughs> then what do you do? Well, I guess you got to wave at each other. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, number three, do you know what a crane fly is? I do not. Is that an, a, an insect or is that like a piece of equipment? It's a it's an insect, and in you see them this time of year. They're these, they look like gigantic mosquitoes. Okay, they're everywhere right But they're now. totally harmless. I didn't know that's what they were called. But they flutter around, and if you swat one out of the air, it injures it so bad, it almost kills oh, it. Oh, that's terrible. Don't do that. I just keep walking. Well, Dylan saw one the other day coming in the house, and he he was terrified. I'm like, oh, no, buddy. It's just a, it's a crane fly. It, they're harmless. So I grabbed it in my fist. They're so slow, and I just squashed it. I'm like, it's, it's a crane fly. Oh, why'd you do that? Because they're annoying. Why can't you just go about your business? Because he was in the garage. He was about to come in the house. And if he had to come in the house. Does it bite? Then, no, they don't bite. Then why would you kill it? Because uh, he was about to come in the house. And if he had gotten in the house, guess who would have been panicking? Not me. I go. I, I know what they don't bite. Kelly Raspberry Evans. Number four. When you have to turn all the socks from outside in. No, from out inside out to outside in. After they come out of the dryer. Huh. Doesn't happen with my socks. Huh. <laughs> it happens with the boys' socks. Huh. 
Uh-huh. Your socks. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing inside right now, y'all. You laugh all you want. With I, I that passive aggressive thing, ladies. You know what I'm talking about. Where you're like, screw it. I'm just gonna leave them wrong side out and fold them that way. Oh, That's and what that, I've started. And then doing. when you go in the drawer, they're inside out. Yeah. So then you have to yeah, turn. Yeah, because I get tired when I'm standing there. Every shirt is in, every shirt is inside out. <laughs> every or half and half, like half inside out, half right side out. Pants all inside. Every article of clothing is removed and tossed into well not even tossed into a laundry basket half the time just drop somewhere inside out and i get tired of it it's a little annoying uh number five tangled earbuds yeah that's that's how uh, annoying is that well i don't think that's a problem and why does that happen so often i don't think that's a majority problem i think that's a very niche problem most earbuds are wireless now. Adam. I know, I know. And I and I have a set of Apple Earbud Pros. Thank you. Yeah. I also have a set of Beats, like over ear. Right. But then every dime. But every once in a while, I just I just need a set of earphones real quick. So I just grab them. And they're invariably always in a ball, a knotted ball. Yes. But why is that? Because when you take them off, you don't put them in a knotted ball. So how is it they it's become in the knotted ball? It's a mystery. I think it's a little invisible elf. Okay. Uh, this one happened to me today. When I went to use the uh, the one holder at Starbucks. Does that mean the bathroom? The bathroom. Someone left, you know, the, 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 the toilet seat paper cutout? Yes. That the, you can take yeah. off the dispenser and then put on the toilet yes. seat? Yes. And it, it, I guess, protects your bottom from touching the toilet yes. seat? Yes. Okay. Someone had left that paper on the toilet seat. Yes. Okay. So I'm looking at it, like, and it's a one-holer, so it's my only option. There's not a latrine. There's just a sit-down toilet. So I'm like, well, I'm certainly not going to touch that. So I'm just... I just, I'm just trying to miss it, right? So I'm just going right in the middle. You could have taken a piece of toilet paper and used that to push it into the water or your foot. Well, my argument is this is the annoyance. People are why, nasty. Why, why wouldn't they just, after they do their thing, just they take care of it? Well, it's supposed to be that little part supposed to flop down in the water. So when you flush, it all goes down together. Didn't Sometimes happen. that fails. Didn't happen. But we, as a person who use everyone, needs to be polite and leave the toilet area like you would like to have it left for you. Right? Because I went into a bathroom the other day, and before I even went in the stall, the woman said, that toilet hasn't been flushed, <laughs> but I mean, it hadn't been flushed Ooh. a lot. Ooh. So the person who's finally like, I, who risks flushing it, you might be risking a situation. Mm. So you have to be like, not going to be able to help with that. You know what I mean? It's like when it's, you risk an overflow situation. Right. But otherwise... Flush. You ever used Wipe one? Wipe off the seat. You ever used one of those things that sticks to your rear end? Because you're kind of sweaty. Alan, why? Why? Why would that be a topic of conversation? Because I think it's borderline gross. Enough. It was brought up by our live studio well, audience. Well, whoever that person is, y'all need to start your own nasty podcast about nastiness. Okay. And you can light it any way you want. And talk about I will nasty, light it any way I want. Nasty, I'll butt put sweat and toilet. Seat I'll put covers. the key light and the fill light on me. So nasty. Uh, let's see. Number seven. Trying to read the label on a medicine bottle. Forget it. On anything anymore. Forget, for, just forget it. It is ludicrous. Is this an old person thing or is this it's an everybody a, thing? The print. Okay. But we have readers and stuff that we have to go get the magnifying glass. But it's not just that. They'll put like blue ink on top of a blue label. Well, just <laughs> screw it. I can't see any. Now I need like those secret code glasses they used to give you in the Cracker Jacks, I guess. Because now I can't even see the ink. What are they doing to us? It's bad. Yeah, I agree with you on that. What? I can't see anything. That's why I'm so thankful for, you know, my pair eyewear readers. Pair eyewear. Yes. 
love Pear Eyewear. I do love Pear Eyewear. You know, whatever your vision is for the remainder of 2024, you can let Pear Eyewear help you bring that vision into focus and help you read medicine bottle labels. You know, Alan's been busy setting up this lovely studio, researching microphones and whatnot online. He loves it. He looks so cute when he does it in his pair eyewear frames. So stylish. Pair eyewear base frames start at just $60, including your prescription. That is really inexpensive. And you can save by using your pre-tax FSA and HSA dollars. Plus get 15% off by using code sandwich at pair eyewear.com. I love my uh, eyewear to have a little personality, right? So I chose basic Kirby frames for my reading glasses. They're blue tortoise color, which is great. Um, 0.5, because I don't really, I just need them when my eyes get tired, right? Then you have fun mixing it up with the top frame starting at just $25. They just snap on thanks to these little magnets. You choose top frames to match the season, the holiday, your favorite superhero sports team. They've got limited edition collections right now. They've got the Music Fest top frames because, you know, Coachella and all that stuff's coming up. They're so cute. They've got grunge plaid, statement snakeskin, punk stripe split. Go to the website to virtually try on the frames. It's so fun. Then, then have fun topping, shopping for the top frames, all affordable, hundreds of options, frames for men, women, kids, wide faces, narrow faces, all the faces with free standard shipping and a flexible 30-day return policy. Visualize a fantastic new year with Pear Eyewear. Go to PearEyewear.com and use code SANDWICH for 15% off your first pair. And support the show by mentioning that you that a sandwich and some loving sent you in your post-checkout survey. That's Pear, P-A-I-R, Eyewear.com, code SANDWICH. Thank you, Pear Eyewear for fitting seamlessly into Alan's list. It is March. I guess we can still talk about the new year. We huh? were talking about that the other day, Alan. Somebody said you're still allowed to say it's the new year until you get through the first quarter. Uh oh, okay. And we're almost at the end of the first quarter. Brooks there. Oh, but you know. Finishing what, your list. Yeah. What I did for the very first time ever in my life because my – Reading glasses would not help me read that allergy medicine bottle. Not strong enough. Not strong enough. I'm like, this is the most microscopic print in the history of microscopic print. I took a picture of it. I did that and you blow it up. And then I did the reverse pinch blow up so I can read it. I know exactly what bottle you're talking about. You're talking about Zoe's medicine, yes. are you? That's the same thing I did. Zoe's taking these little drops and um, what I, font is that? Same like one point. That is the same thing. I, I had to do the same thing. My glasses weren't strong enough. And why so even print it? That. I don't know. Why don't they but just I save the money? Blew it up just, too. They could just save the money. And it's a smart tip, though. Just not put a label on the bottle. You can't read it. It's true. Uh, number eight, zits. Well, they are annoying, and you think at our at our stage of life, we wouldn't have to deal with them anymore. Well, the reason this one is top of mind is because we just had that photo shoot. Yeah, but I didn't notice it that day. Oh, uh, Janine did. I said, well, I brought well, it up. She's right there in your face. I brought it up. Uh, Janine, our makeup artist, died. She, uh, I said, can you believe this? And she's like, oh, yeah. Every time, every time you're going to have a photo shoot, these, these are the kind of things that pop up. She goes, I'll make it disappear. She yeah, did make I it disappear. I didn't even notice. Yeah, she did make it disappear. But zits are annoying. Especially when you try to get them with that tool and they won't blow. It's like, what? why won't you blow? Yeah. Number nine. I've heard that before. Group text notifications when you aren't participating. Now, I'm not really talking about the family text because oh. I am a big participant in said family text. I'm more talking about a lot of sports chats. Like, they're, they're not really group texts but they're on these apps where you're coordinating with all the other parents and right. coaches for kids sports. And it, and it becomes, it just becomes where the notifications won't stop. I'm a sitter outer of group text. My friends, I, I hope they don't take it personally. I just chime in when necessary and toss in an occasional little heart or thumbs up because it's a lot. I'm not a, I'm not a big group texter but I know the importance of group texting. I just don't want to, you know, I just keep it, my participation to a minimal. I'm a big reader of all the messages, but I'm not really an active participant. 
it is a little annoying sometimes. True. I had to turn on Do Not Disturb last night. Really? Yeah. Is that and, I, bad? and I never do that. That bad, huh? See what I mean about you? Sometimes you go through these phases where you're just like extra, extra, I don't know what it is. Easily annoyed. Yeah. I, I I was trigger happy one time and I left a group conversation because I'm not going to mention any names, but it was Alan's family. <laughs> and um, they and a woman who is like family to who grew up next door and they were going back and forth. And I was trying to use my phone as a timer and I was recording commercials and I just got really frustrated and I just like left the conversation. <laughs> And then I could never get back in. Never came back. <laughs> never could get back in. And we were okay with that. Uh, and then the last one, insurance. Yeah, that's bad. Insurance. Now, I know everybody has insurance. You have you to it. have insurance. And when you need it, you need it. A lot of people might, well, I don't know. If, yeah, I would say most people have health insurance. Most, I don't know. most people do. I would say the majority, maybe. Um, everybody who owns a home has home insurance, house insurance, property insurance. If you drive a car, you're supposed to have car insurance. A lot of people in apartments, though, don't take advantage of renter's insurance. A lot of maybe people should. have life insurance. Mm -hmm. Pet um, insurance is a big one now. You can have... Man, those vets love pushing that, don't they? Pet insurance, travel insurance. Um it goes on and on. But you know what? You don't, you know, everybody always checks the no box on the travel insurance, but Big Al and what happened My to him man. over the holidays with his wife getting so sick when they were in St. John or St. Thomas, he was like, from now on, I will always be getting travel insurance, you know? And I know when you need insurance, you need it. You need it. But that's what the insurance, I wish I had thought of this. You know who thought, you know who came up with insurance? Who? Ben Franklin. That's smart. Yeah. That's smart man. Smart guy. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't even a president. He's on the money. How do he do that? But he's so smart. Anyway, I was talking to Cole about this the other day because I was bemoaning and bitching and moaning about our home insurance and how I think a lot of people in our area are going through this where they're getting their uh, home insurance premium and they're like, <laughs> what happened here? Yeah. They're like, whoa, what is going on? What I was told by the insurance company was that the payouts from the big insurance companies in the Dallas Fort Worth area over the last few years have been so big that some companies are just pulling out of Texas saying we're not going to insure in Texas anymore because, of, because of all the hail. It's hail. It's hail. And then we had the tornadoes that ripped through Dallas. Right. It's just but the hail. But that's what Alan and I keep doing. We're like, probably could use a new roof, but we're going to wait for that one big hail storm to do it in because – there's always going to be another one coming. But that's that's the that's the gamble, the game you play with insurance. So you pay your premium, you pay your premium, you pay your premium. You could go 20 years and never file a claim until you need a new roof, yeah. right? Or you could pay for 6 months and then oh, I need a new roof. My my my, you know, my roof has a big hole in it because of the thunderstorms and the hailstorms and the insurance company will pay, you yeah. know. It's just I know I'm I know I'm preaching to the choir, listener, and I know you're like, would you just shut up about insurance? We all have to pay it. I know. It's just annoying. I, I, it's annoying. And, and it's I, Alan's list. And I wish I back had, off. I wish I had thought of it. Well, you'd have to be several, several hundred years old to have yes. done that. But it's genius, it's a genius idea. Well, come up with another genius idea. How about that? How about that? Whatever annoys you on that list, figure out a way to make it not annoying anymore. But, you know, and I know we have listeners that are in the insurance business, and maybe somebody can explain this to me. But the insurance companies, their businesses, I get it. They make, they the premiums they collect have got to be more than what they pay out. But they've also got to pay all their people, yeah. all their salespeople, right. all their executives, yeah. all their shareholders. All their buildings, all their utilities. I get it. It's a business. It's a business, yeah. But good grief, this property insurance in Dallas Fort Worth is ridiculous. Because the you know, the property values have gone up too. I know. It's bad. The prices good. of all the houses. Good or bad. Gone. Well, it's I guess that's good. Yeah, my parents, when they moved here from South Carolina, were like, What? <laughs> property tax in South Carolina was like 
35 cents. <laughs> Not really, but it was nothing like what it is in Texas. Let's change the energy in the room. Alan brought up, yeah, a photo shoot. Last time we recorded the podcast, had we done the photo shoot at that point? No. No, we were getting ready to. So we were getting prepared for the photo shoot. And I had we a now, zip in too. We have now had the photo shoot. How do you think it went? Um, I, I, I thought it was fine. Um, I, I, my uh, Russ face said I had to be there at 9 a.m. And I think my first picture was taken at 1230. <laughs> That's a little bit early. So I was wondering that. what that was all about. I don't know. I don't think Russ face understands um, timing. Anything? No timing. So, yeah, they wanted Alan there at 9 a.m. And uh, like he's, he is right. He sat around for a long time because. For ladies, it takes a lot longer to get ladies. ready, right? So they were starting, we were doing like the 13 podcasts went first. And then, you know, they did the Shut Up podcast and they did all the chatty daddies and stuff like that. Those are all in the Yay Network families. And then, you know, while the whole time we have one makeup artist and one stylist, thank the Lord we had a stylist. Her name is Alex Cohen. She's wonderful. Janine Galante, fabulous makeup artist. And um, our photographer, Andy, who was just great, made everybody so comfortable. But it was just a long, long process. But y'all, I got in trouble. I got in trouble. This was um, in a building in Dallas. It's a studio. It's in this building that has a lot of office spaces and a small studio used just for photography studios. You can rent out the space. And you have to have a code to get in, a barcode or a keypad, all this stuff. It was kind of frustrating. It wasn't really working for us. So like when I got there, Big Al was in the lobby. So he let me in. And then Alan pulled up behind me. So I just waited in the lobby to let Alan in. So while I'm waiting for Alan to come, I'm standing there in the lobby and it's not very big. And you can look through the glass and there's somebody standing on the other side of the glass, less than six feet away from you. And you're just making eye contact with them. And they come to open the door and it's like, because it's locked. And they're kind of looking around the keypad and stuff. So what does Kelly Raspberry do? Let me get the door for you. So I go and open the door. I'm like, you look nice. I'm going to let you in. And they come in. So that happened a couple of times while I'm waiting for Alan. So then these two, I would say they were a little disheveled looking people. Why, why, why they were just disheveled. Describe them. They were just disheveled. That is the description of these two lovely ladies that were a little disheveled looking. Like unkept? I'm just saying they were disheveled looking. You can picture that. I'm not going to disparage anyone. They were just a little dis disheveled. Well, you're disparaged. That's, no, I, I can be disheveled. <laughs> and not that's okay when you just wake up from a nap i was my mascara was hanging you off were the side of my face. I was you, very were, disheveled. you were very disheveled they were ladies disheveled approximately nine o'clock in the morning okay so they're coming to the door and they have a crumpled up piece of paper and they're looking at the keypad and kind of like they don't i was like I go and open up the door for her. i was like y'all look like nice i say the same thing y'all look like nice ladies i'm gonna let you in they're like thank you and they come shuffling in and right behind them comes another woman be bopping in with her uh, briefcase and stuff hung over her arm. And she looked at me, and she goes, why are you here? <laughs> I wow. said, I'm waiting for uh, my husband. We're going out for a photo shoot. Why are you here? She said, do not let anybody else in this building. That's why we have codes. So like, she say it like that. Okay. She was very matter of fact. She's like, do not do that again. Was she the building manager? She was a tenant, apparently, in the in said building. I was like, okay, I won't do that anymore, which is really awkward because I'm a very polite person. But see, this is how you let in murderers, right? Right? Somebody has to open the door for a murderer to come in and start shooting up the place. And I'm being polite. So then I feel really bad. I'm like, well, I'm sure they were just really nice people. And then about 30 seconds after that, those two women come back to me with their crumpled up piece of paper. And they say, do you know where the drug testing is? And I said, I don't. I said, but let me help you find it. And so I tried to help them find it in the directory. And that's about the time you came walking in. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I can't help you. I'm here. This is the directory. And I need to go up with my husband. And then we got out of there. So I was helping drug people because apparently there's a courthouse located right across the street. And for some reason, people need drug testing, um, like with a quick turnaround. 
yeah, I guess to uh, find a job. Or, so maybe that's why they have the coat on the stay building. Stay out of jail? Or? So I got my wrist slap. That was right before the photo shoot. But I had to let that go because, you know, it's all about energy at photo shoots. you got to be in a good place of mind. And, um, you know, I've been dealing with very puffy eyelids. It's all my fault because I went and got Dysport, not Botox, but Dysport, which spreads a little bit more than Botox. And I, you know, I've done it so many times. I was not reminded by my injectionist, don't lay down for four hours. But again, I'm tired all the time. So what do I do? I immediately came home and took a nap. And the Botox kind of spread down to my eyes, the Dysport. And I've had puffy eyelids ever since. So what a mess. But hopefully y'all can't see that in the photos. But from what we saw from the little outtakes, it looked really good. I thought the photos looked really good, the ones that we saw. It looked really good, little outtakes yeah. we yeah. took. And, you know, the stylists, like I said, thank God for Alex, because all of us were, were like, we don't know what would look good, what we think would look good in a photo. But she had some great tips, you know, as far as what to wear for photo shoots and taking me outside of my comfort zone in the palette, you know. You know... If I was in a building and someone just came up to me and said, why are you here? Yes. I would double down. 100% I would double down. I why? Would, I would say, well, why are you here? Well, she obviously. You tell me why you, why you are here, and then I will answer your question. Well, why are you here? Well, I'm, I'm like breaching security in her building, and I would think that in regards to her safety, she had a right to ask me that question. I don't know. I was putting everyone at risk. I don't know. It's a public building. But I was putting every but with a public building with a you had to have a code to get in. And you were in. I was, thanks to somebody else who held the door open for me. I don't know. We were breaching security all I, up in that. I think place. I would have doubled down on her. No, I was I you know, I'm a rule follower and see, but I was breaking the rules and I was rightfully reprimanded. And I accept my punishment. Which was a, a tongue lash, a I'm mini tongue lashing. Well, I'm happy go lucky AE until somebody bows up on me. Like the guy at Homie What's D's who said up? I who said I couldn't grow grass under a magnolia tree with my seed. But was what she's saying bowing up or just like, why are you here? Are you just letting all the drug tests what what is the deal here, right? She had a right to be upset. The way you said it, it was she probably was, has experienced pe random people coming up and like this is the scary situation. She's probably had to deal with that. I was making the situation worse. But it is hard when you're in a building and somebody's looking at you through the glass. But Anna said the same thing happened to her. Sweet Anna from the Kid Craddock Morning Show said somebody did that to her and kind of shook the door. And she just shrugged like the emoji, like, sorry, and didn't let him in. That's Anna. Anna has more backbone than me. I wouldn't even look over there. How do you not make eye contact with somebody when they're like rattling the door? You know how in? you don't make eye contact? What? You don't make eye contact. It just feels so rude. Well, I, yeah, I guess that's the difference between you and me. That's not the only difference. <laughs> well, let's hear some of them. Let's know. hear some of them. I don't know. Why don't you, you, so you, you get it off your chest? Well, let's hear some of them. Okay. Number one, <laughs> I'm not nearly as annoying. How about that? My list will be continued at another time. Well, I hope they didn't beat everybody down. My list was supposed to be kind of funny, too. Well, you know, sometimes, you know, I understand getting things off your chest when you're annoyed by things. But it's also sort of like when you have a dream, like a nightmare or something, and you're trying to tell that dream and nightmare to somebody else, and they're kind of looking at you with glazed over look on their eyes. It's sort of, I guess, like along the same way. I don't know. Next time, I'll do the top 10 things. That you love. That I love and give me warm fuzzies. That'd be great. That's yeah. more uplifting. Yeah. 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 Cause that that's more uplifting, right? right? Well, I, I have periods like that too, where when I'm in a happy go lucky mood. When? Most when was of, the last time? I think most of the time. I think more time than you not. are happiest when your boys are here. Yeah. Our boys, our sons. But I mean, we're a blended family, but you are Happiest, chirpiest, sing songiest <laughs> when you have the voice here. I like seeing the voice. Speaking of singing songs, I got into the YouTube bunny hole last night or the night before. And Is that when you said, I'm Bush, baby, I'm coming to bed? I'm like, good. He rolls over and kisses me goodnight, puts on his glasses, 
He hunger it puts yeah. it back to me and hungers now with his cell phone. Yeah. I'm like, he's gonna be up for another two hours now. Well, well, there's millions of well, millions. There's a lot of videos on YouTube of the Mandalorian theme. So I found one of this guy playing classical guitar. He's playing the whole freaking Mandalorian theme with one guy. I'm like, oh my God, there's so many talented people on YouTube. And then I go to this other one. There are these two guys playing cellos. There's two of them. They're, I think they're brothers. But it was amazing. So I, 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 send, I send these videos to JD, my brother-in-law, because- my In the middle of the night? In the middle of the night, because my nieces both play uh, violin. So I thought, oh, they, they find this pretty interesting. And maybe they could come up with their own- Mandalorian duet yeah. that can be posted on YouTube that other people can find at one o'clock in the morning. But the coolest one of all, it, I think it's the the Danish, the Danish Philharmonic Orchestra or something. This big freaking orchestra with all the pieces. They play the Mandalorian theme, and it was amazing. So I've just I've been whistling and humming the Mandalorian theme for about the last forty eight hours. Uh, annoying list number. Two. What? What? Why? Why is that annoying? The con you, you asked me to make a list of things that are annoying <laughs> about you. That's the constant Which one? humming, whistling, and I thought you liked you it when I hum and whistle. But it's the same tune all day. It's the earworm thing, right? That's oh, annoying. Man. It was great. One of our live studio audience members says that she has heard these two guys who play cello. They are brothers. Are they called the Cello Brothers? Um, Are they called Mellow Cello? That's a good name. I, I think Mello it's... Mellow Cello. That's the great name for a cello all-boy group. I think it's at two, the number two cellos. At two cellos. I like Mellow Cello better. Oh, they're great. They call me Mellow Cello. Know that song? They also played like uh, the Game of Thrones theme, um, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly theme. I mean... Really cool. You know how you get caught in those bunny holes on I YouTube do. and then you're just sitting there you're like, holy I crap, I just, I just burned three freaking hours listening to these goobers play the Mandalorian oh, thing. Let me tell you the best, darkest bunny hole I ever went down was when I was researching Scientology. Whoa. I got in a deep bunny hole on that. I was up all night. All night. And before I knew it, I was like, ooh, I need to get a shower and go to work. It was right when all that stuff was first coming out, you know, with the Scientology stuff. Anyway. All right, man. Well, there you go. We ended on a little bit more positive note there after I bemoaned and griped about crane flies and tangled earbuds and insurance and people who write checks and paper on the toilet seat and whatever else I brought up. Bringing up that annoying list again. <laughs> Why don't you just go through the whole thing again? <laughs> that, that was Feels it. like what you're that doing. Was, that was it. Feels like exactly what you're doing. That was pretty much it. All right. Well, I guess we're done. All right, man. <laughs> No. Got anything else? No. Okay. I'm ready to go back to bed. You happy with the amount of light in here? You keep sitting in my light and I keep leaning forward. I don't know what else to do. I, I don't know what else to do. You know when you go to like a um, a big arena style concert like Guns N' Roses or Metallica or Taylor Swift or whoever, just the mega act. Yeah. And you see over the stage the, the millions of dollars worth of lights they have hanging up there above. Yeah. To, and they, they turn all the different colors right. and light. They light everything. I'm going to buy those. Or just sit back a little. And I'm going to fit them in this office. Or just sit back three inches. It's going to be. It's a cheaper option. It's going to be 150 degrees in here because of all the light. Or sit back. That's it. <laughs> Simple solution. All right. Well, love you desperately. I love you, y'all. Y'all pray for me. I am so tired. And my all my work comes back, nothing's wrong with me. It's just me. I'm you know just what? tired. I think we're falling apart. We can't read medicine bottles. We're well, all... that, that font was really small. The print was small, but I'm just I you're cannot, always tired. I cannot get enough sleep. I'm gonna go straight to bed after this. I'm starting to, after I finish cleaning the I'm kitchen. starting to gripe and moan about insurance and people at the grocery store. I think we're getting crusty. I Maybe. think it's happening before our eyes. We are becoming crusty. Maybe. Oh, and pray for me. Um, I've got to go to jury duty on uh, Monday, and I don't want to get picked. So pray, pray that I don't get picked. Because there's something really cool that I'm going to be doing on Tuesday. And I don't want to talk about it until I don't want to jinx it. So um, next podcast, you'll hear about the really, really super, super cool thing that I get to do on Tuesday if I don't get picked for jury duty on Monday. 
Yeah. And I'm sure we will podcast again real soon. And in the immortal words of the great Keanu Reeves, life is good when you have a good sandwich. Ooh. All right. I had to take notes because Michael was out, but that was very helpful. I took my own notes this time, right? Ooh. Here, hold on, guys. Let me turn this. Uh, let me turn this off. I want you to let the dogs out really quick. Who let too. the dogs out? Here, I'll read for a second. Have you read Leah Remini's book? No, I've not read her book, but I've watched the, the TV series and stuff. Kelly, come on. Alan can't judge what three inches is. He's a man. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Alan, what's your way to early Dallas Cowboys record prediction for this year? Uh, nine, nine and eight or eight nine and nine. Eight or eight and nine. You guys are the progressive people becoming their parents. Yeah. Oh, liver biopsy. Oh, we'll pray for everybody. Pray for Terry. That's, um, I'm sure, very concerning. Hopefully it's all good. I went back and started the podcast at one. Now I'm on 448. Oh, my Lord, Heidi. How's it going? What were we talking about on 448? Thank you, Miranda. Coltrane is predicting only seven wins this year. Well, he, he, that might be right. Love you, Mel. If it's based on what Thank they've done in free agency, Cole, then yeah, I'm with you. Tell him, Kelly, best of luck in the job interview. Thank you. Yeah, I think she's going to get hired. She's going to find out Friday, I guess. So. <laughs> Thank you, Seema. Sim, is it? Is that Seema M? Who, is Sim, Seema M isn't Sin, 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 Simony, is it? Get Easter dog. Get Easter I love dog. you, Mel. How's Colin doing? Oh, that's uh, Zoe, not Larry. <laughs> that's okay, Cole. People confuse him all the time. Where's Larry? Uh, Did in, you let him out? Yeah, I think so. I think he's in there scooting. Joey. Just like a little Easter egg. Like an Easter egg. Like an Easter egg. Oh, Rachel, yeah. I, uh, I had a couple of brackets filled out, but I didn't I didn't do very wrong. Or do very well. I kind of gave up after like Kentucky got beat. My bracket was all messed up. My bracket was all messed up. You got a messed up bracket. Got a messed up bracket. Got a messed up bracket. Where is Larry? I don't know where Larry is. All Larry. <laughs> yeah, a sandwich and some blocking Kelly's light. Get out of my light. <laughs> so, so wheels off. It's true. This whole Mickey Mouse operation is wheels off. Aww. Oh, I'm sorry, Jessica. That's that's uh that's sad. They're they are great dogs, as you know. They're they're so <laughs> they're so uh so smart and loving and She's a, a trying little, to trip you all the time. A little bit protective. Good watchdog. Larry. And then there's Larry. I'm starting to worry. I think I let him out. I'm starting to think you didn't. <laughs> I forgot to let him out. Let me see. I could have sworn I opened his crate. He would have been here by now. Yeah, he's right there. Larry, he's come up, here, Larry. He's over there sniffing his butt. Why are you sniffing your butt? In pain and went to children's. Oh, 
Oh, y'all pray for little Colin Lansford too. Come here, Larry, my love. What's What's wrong? See, here's Zoe, the the greedy attention grabber. That'd be cool. Come here, Larry. Come here. Show everybody your new haircut. Come here, sweet boy. Come here. Oh, my goodness gracious. Look at cute little Larry. Larry the itchy. Look at everybody there. See? Look. This is Larry the itchy. Oh, his tummy's all wet because he's been licking his tummy or something. Look at sweet boy. That's my Larry. Why is he so nervous? He's got a sticky tongue, too. Yeah, it's like a gecko. And he sweats. Yeah. So his skin is kind of always sweaty. And greasy. <laughs> oh, no. Look at his tummy. Is it all wet? He's got his little paws or he's got like little body dandruff or whatever. We love you, Larry. He's missing a few teeth. He's No, he's not. Well, he's got a snaggle tooth. So whenever he's laying there, he's just got a little snaggle tooth. I love him so much. I love you so much, Larry. I know. What? <laughs> Come here, new flashy. <laughs> my whole my whole lap is covered in his skin when <laughs> he gets off me. <laughs> He's a hot little He's mess. Little, yeah. He's got this little spot here. It's like... Oh gosh, that's bad. Something is going on. You know what? When she washed him, maybe she didn't use the anti-itch shampoo because he, maybe we need to wash him. He's irritated there. Well, he's, he's, get always, his stuff. he's always I know, but that's bad. He's, he's looking got, at look, raw. He's got dandruff. He's scratch, I know, but he's scratching it raw. This little tummy's raw. Ugh. There he is, guys. There's Larry. Larry. Yep. There he is. <laughs> Poor guy. Poor guy. Ugh. Be nice to him, Zoe. So. All right, guys. <laughs> Your pot spots, That's right, Dee. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. Poor thing. Does that feel better? Does that hurt? When you put this on that raw skin, do you think it hurts? Uh, all right, peeps. Thanks for uh, thanks for showing up tonight. Um, I think what I'm going to start doing, just just so y'all are, will know, and I don't think it really affects you guys too much, but I'm not going to post these lives anymore. So hopefully that incentivizes more people to come to the live because I'm not going to leave it online just because the quality is not great. And um, I'd like to have more people, you know, show up for the live. So I'm going to start that tonight. So this one is, isn't going to be posted, but I will start posting the full episode. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of editing, just a little bit and post the full episode on the YouTube channel. So if you want to go back and watch the full episode, like with, you know, we're joking about the lights a lot, but with the lights and uh, from the good camera, you can do that. And I'll probably start posting some highlights and stuff like that too. But like I was saying a couple of podcasts ago, we want to start doing more on YouTube. So this is part of that. We're just trying to figure some of this out. We're going through some changes on how we're doing stuff. So that's one change we're going to make. We're not going to post the lives anymore. It's just going to be a live. If you want to watch it live, you come to the live. And then if you want to watch the full episode, it'll post. Maybe not Thursdays, but definitely within a couple of days of the audio going live. So as time goes on, it'll it'll become a little more synced. But uh, stronger and wiser, what do you mean the other? You mean the... Um, the video, the full uh, podcast video, it'll be on our YouTube channel. Yeah, that's fine. If you don't catch the live, that, that's totally fine and understandable. But if you want to watch the episode, uh, you, you'll be able to go to the YouTube channel and watch the video. So I'll be posting the full episode um, as a video on the YouTube channel. And then you can always go listen, of course, and hopefully you do that as well. 
Does that, does that sound okay? So for you, you guys that usually show up for the live, you know, no big deal. But there are some people, I think they, they, and I don't know why they would, because the quality is pretty poor, but they go back and watch the, the live broadcasts. Yeah, you can totally still see it on this channel. I'm going to post it on a sandwich and some lovings YouTube. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying, Stronger and Wiser. Yeah, you want to get you a YouTube. Uh, get you a YouTube. Well, you you already have a YouTube subscription because you have to be a subscriber to the channel to watch the live. So at some point, you subscribe to YouTube. So all you have to do is go to at a sandwich and some loving, and uh, and you know subscribe, which it sounds like you already are. And then when I post a new video, you'll get a notification. Oh, thanks, Mel. Appreciate you. Hope Colin's feeling better. I know. So anyway, um, those are, those are some of the changes. So hopefully that works better for y'all and we'll get more people for the live and have a higher quality video for the people who want to go watch the full episode and it'll just be, it'd be better for everybody. So yeah, Charles, she does, but she hasn't posted anything there in years. So that's another thing that I want to help Kelly with is uh, kind of spice that channel up again, but she's going to have to do, videos so i don't know if she'll be up for that but if you're gonna do youtube you gotta do videos you know so we'll see we'll see what happens all right guys thanks for coming and we will talk to you soon bye